Come on, staying on the red. And my biggest question is, what does G2 do about the Kaiser? Dom1 have prioritized it in every single game. And now that they have been the ones to win last game, they realize, okay, let's ban away the Syndra, let's ban away the Zaya. G2 actually gonna ban away the Renekton. Perhaps they huh. will now first pick the Kaiser. And I would love to see it. I think Perks has been their best performer at Worlds thus far. And putting him on is. this champion will enable him. If you see another game where Dom1 is not having that killer instinct, where they're sitting back, where they're allowing you know more and more time, that's the kind of champion that Perks can just take over a game on. And additionally, now we see Nagari's Jace locked in on the opposite side. And while it's not entirely early game focus, it is a champion that we know that can be this big early game pressure. And you have to wonder if the teams are going to swap roles in this game. If it's going to be G2 with the late scaling options, now that they've locked in the rise, up against some of the laning picks that we might see from Dom1. We've also got to remember, Yasuo is unbanned. If G2 leaves it up here, would not be surprised at all to see Dom1 grab that. They ran it for their bot lane. Cannon and Showmaker also fully capable of playing that composition. I just love the fact that G2 are basically taking Darmon's comp like they did with Griffin. You're just like, oh, you play that? No, no, no. We played that. <laughs> How'd that go, Vettius? <laughs> yeah, well, How'd it didn't that work out super time? well the last time. Ooh, but, no. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, and we've got the Yasuo Gragas coming out. I'm excited to see this. As said by Azale. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm curious. Is it going to the mid lane? Do we see Canyon on that Gragas in the jungle? Or does it go bot up against the Kai'Sa I, I think it's the flex, right? And that's why it is great to grab it in the first round here. Because G2 now, if you try to pick specifically to counteract it in the bottom lane or to counteract it specifically in one of these soul lanes or whatever, uh, Don Juan can always swap that around and they're going to have the ability to kind of leave that decision till later in the draft. It's one of those interesting situations where while Don Juan are playing Yasuo Gragas, you also have to recognize that you're playing it against the OG Yasuo Gragas. And how much value does that offer? You recognize the power spikes. You know how this lane matchup goes. So how much does that influence uh, Nuclear and Beryl's ability to try and find advantages in that two versus two? And I like that the Orn has been banned away here, giving a lot of respect over to Wonder on the top side of the map. They've seen what happens when you don't neutralize the Orn early on in a game. And with kind of the very standard backline threat paired with the Nautilus, Orn would be a fantastic pick for the side of G2 Esports. As Damwon now have to choose AD carry, who are they going to give it to? Will it be Yasuo on the bottom side? Yeah, that's the big question right now because it looks like based on the bans that Damwon are saying... Oh, it's bot. It's bot. Yeah, I mean, it must be, but based on G2's bans, they were expecting something else to potentially come out bottom with Showmaker on the Yasuo, but with the Lee Sin now locked in, they deny two of the strongest junglers in the current meta away from Yankos. He's also not going to get Elise or Kiana, which means, does he now go on to Olaf? Does he consider maybe something like a Nocturne? Or maybe he goes for one of the tried and true Lee Sin counter picks in the form of the Rek'Sai. Yeah, Rek'Sai great into that Lee Sin, but just the, the beauty of having these flex picks, you can see, right? They had the opportunity to put it mid and jungle or go bot. G2 then essentially have to waste both of their bands to take away the threat of the possibility of this Yumi and Ezreal. So then they just send it right down there. They pick away another jungle. They push them down that ladder of priority picks a little bit more. Wait, wait, wait. wait. York go is great into Jace. I would be so happy there. Oh. This is the old school counter. This was back when Yorick was extremely popular. Um, they would often be used as an answer to the Jace. I know, Azel, you are a Yorick main for a very long time. I, back I was in the day. back on playtest when they were actually redesigning this champion. I played the old Yorick, I played the new Yorick all the time. Uh, this is a really, really strong matchup, but it is difficult in the first couple levels. So much of this matchup actually just comes down to, can you hit your E on Yorick? It's all about getting the ghouls onto the Jace, poking him down with that, and putting him into a position where you can threaten the all-in with the cage. That being said, you must play around Yorick, because Yorick from behind is absolute garbage. Now, one thing I will say about G2's comp is that their side lanes and scaling is still pretty strong. But for Dom1, I love the addition of the Corky to this draft because the Siege would have been quite weak. Mm -hmm. But now with the combination of the Corky and the Jace, this composition has plenty of wave clear. Their Siege and Poke is very strong. And their scaling is also very good. They also needed magic damage. Corky gives them that. So I think it's really intelligent alongside Yasuo, Jace, and Lee. In a very different game. In addition to that, Damwon find themselves ahead. The Yasuo with the wind wall makes their siege even easier. Even easier to pressure these objectives out. But, as you said, Yorick. Yorick Isaac. The Yorick needs attention <laughs> in the early game. So all eyes might just be on the top side of the map. Jace versus Yorick. So while that is true, I actually expect G2 to put more attention towards the bot side. 
a part of me feels that they want to try and get perks ahead, but also put Nuclear in a position where he is not strong on this Yasuo. Now, do I think that's the best thing for the comp? Debatable, but that is the theory that I think that G2 is going to play for. They're going to look to gain priority mid, and they're going to look to play for bot. I think it's fine as long as you protect Wonder, because Wonder is going to be happy in the 1v1. It's just if you start getting dove, if you start getting put behind, you're forced to use your ultimate defensively, your opponent can kill it off, and then you lose all kill threat and all lane pressure. So this is the things that really work against Yorick when played at a serious deficit. And once again, a very high stakes early game for both sides. 1-1 is the scoreline. G2 going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dom1 Gaming. An incredible run from Dom1 so far, but we'll see how the series will unfold. So level one shenanigans, anything crazy going on. Looks like nothing too chaotic. G2 will not look to get the deep vision on the enemy red buff this time round, but we will still see Yankos drop the early uh, trinket and then immediately go back to base to replace. We've seen this every single game so far. It provides you with that early sweeper to be able to set up for ganks in the early laning phase. So nothing too different or crazy yet. Looks like Rek'Sai going to be starting on the bot side of the map. I'd be surprised if they go for an invade. I much expect the full bot side clear to initial path top, but no, they're going for it. Okay, here we go. A little bit of a late invade will be spotted out by Barrel. They will see him in return, so they know that this one has been found out. Mickey, a bit high risk there. Will be able to place the ward down. The sweeper comes out as well, giving a bit of additional experience over to the side of Canyon. And I love this game because there are two clear lanes that we need to watch and one which we clearly know not a whole lot is going to happen. You're talking about mid lane, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am talking about mid lane. I, you Caps know versus Showmaker, two of the best performing mid laners <laughs> in the tournament. Just going to flame playing. Caps like that? <laughs> they're playing Rise versus Gold. All right, all right, all right. So we won't talk about it. At least it's not a Zero versus Gold. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That is the true Dark Ages. It is the Dark Ages. But we don't have to experience that because we do have plenty of action. We do have Welcome plenty of light. interesting matchups, especially up towards the top side of the map. And we can see that both junglers actually starting on the bot side. Um, Mickey and Perks trying to take advantage of their early range advantage early on to try and get some early push priority in that lane. But based on the jungle paths, it does suggest that both top laners want to be on the top side of the map for either early cover or an early game. And this is the only time I will steal color points, but I've talked to Mickey and Perks a lot about Yasuo bot lane. Note that the Kai'Sa did not auto attack the Yasuo because doing so would draw aggro of the caster creeps and force a push in the favor of nuclear. If he can freeze under his tower, he's set up for success. So Perks is only using the Q to harass on this first wave. It's really intelligent stuff from Perks, and that's the kind of thing you were talking about, Vedius. When you're playing against players who are reputed for playing this style, they know this bot lane in and out. You know what is good against it. You know what is frustrating to play against, and that can give you a significant advantage going forward. And Yankos now, seeing that the Wolves are gone, you should have a very strong idea of where Canyon is going to be on the map, that he's going to be clearing towards topside, which will mean Wonder will have to be careful for the next minute or two. Are they dive this? I mean, if they're Why still level one, you well. could go right now. They have exhaust on the side of the Yasuo, though. Fleet footwork as well. They can't just go in for the play. The auto forward. The TP is there, though. Beautiful body slam comes in from Barrel. Nuclear, though, ain't going to be in trouble. Perks flashing in, and that's going to be it. Mickey not going to make it out in the end. One for one trade, but the rest of G2 is still here. Cap still has the setup. Empowered route. Where's it going to go? Perks stepping forward. Flash in from Showmaker. Perks now in trouble, though. He's taking it now. Showmaker now turning it back. The double kill for the Corky mid lane. They are going to burn him down in the end. Caps so close to death, but G2 still coming out on top. So. We talked about where G2 would like to play in the early game. When I said I thought they'd play bot, I did not expect a level one tower dive to come out from G2 Esports, but they utilized the early priority they had in the mid lane to make the roam down bot. Yankos already had level three, and as we were saying, Nuclear and Beryl were only level one, so they lose all of that farm in the bot side of the map. With no teleport, they have no way to catch. And that's why how they played out the early laning phase was so important. They never lot let Nuclear and Barrel get access to the minion wave to get experience to hit level two. So then you're trying to defend this dive at level one and it becomes so incredibly difficult. And you can see that the problem here is Perks actually gains tower aggro. So the moment Showmaker dives on top of him, it's very easy for him to find that kill. But then Showmaker, he doesn't have the health to be able to survive and G2 end up walking away with three kills. And while he does go down, fantastic play from Showmaker. Now at 2-1, if he had not gotten that kill, it could have been disastrous for the side of Dom1. 
Now he's feeling comfortable in lane. Cole feels like a Don Juan classic at this point as he will pick that one up for himself in the mid lane. And while Showmaker is going to be really happy about that, Nuclear and Barrel now are in such a difficult spot because if you don't have all-in potential with the Yasuo Gragas bot lane, you can just kind of get harassed with Reckless Abandon, and that's what we can see here from Perks. Yeah, pushing forward. If you're forced to use the wind wall defensively, you are going to eventually end up in a situation where they can very easily all in you. A single dagger for the side of the Oslo. And I think it all comes back to what we were talking about in Draft as well, which was that when you play up against a duo that has a lot of experience mm -hmm. on this matchup, they know how to play against it. And this is part of the reason why, when we spoke, I kind of expected Jeech to play towards bot, because I had this feeling that Perks would be like, if we kill Nuclear early, we've won. It game is over. Nothing I have to worry about. And they trust in Perks' decision-making and planning, and so they committed to this play. And now, after this early kill, you can already see the 20 CS advantage that they built, and G2 is going to keep using this prior that they have in mid to roam towards bot and shut this Yasuo Gragas down. And also, if you're drawing Canyon down to constantly defend against potential tower dives, well, guess what? You're getting that isolated 1v1 up on the top side just through all the pressure. Because if Canyon goes top side, he knows Caps is pushing mid. There's the threat of a four man dive happening again. And if it repeats once more, it could just be lights out. There is a 1,000 gold lead in favor of Perks over the Yasuo right now. The only reason why it's not 1,000 on the gold difference is because Noguri is running his classic Kleptomancy, and he's been able to build a bit of a gold advantage over Wonder in the top lane. But as you've been saying, Azel, this is fine. We know that Wonder will get to a point where he can challenge the Jace in that 1v1. And you said it earlier about the York on the top side, as I'd like to say it once more for the Yasuo. A Yasuo who falls behind <laughs> is useless. I mean, he can do a lot, just not for his team. <laughs> <laughs> and we've all been here. Two zero record so far. Might change today. Of course, a lot of utility in the kit is what I call Ooh, it. Okay, you just start maxing W. With I was the gonna all, say that's with a the wind wall. That's a wind wall. Nice you for your core I, I know Yamato can like Spear of Shogun <laughs> for maximum wind walls. Maybe ah, that's his theory. <laughs> top lane in Very Yasuo. Very interesting. Yeah. So. Difficult now for Nuclear, and now he's going to be in trouble. That's a beautiful hook. A wind wall in the wrong direction. That was comically bad from Nuclear, and he's in trouble now. Burns down and looking a lot like a solo Kyuyasuo right at this moment. And G2 find another double kill on the bot side of the map. The camp continues. The summoner spells weren't up, and G2 will continue to get perks ahead. And this is perks on a marksman scaling pick here that is only going to get more and more dangerous throughout the game. And G2 is a team that can pull off these sort of strategies, that can make you look silly because they are so damn good at setting up and exploiting advantages. Look at them sitting back here, allowing the wave to push in, waiting for Yankos to get the angle. The hook is oh. beautiful, tags him right around the side. Yankos burrows in, and it's, at this moment, you know you're dead. But the best thing about this was that Darmon actually had two people in the river. Yet, they were working together to secure the Scuttle Crab, and the reason why the Corky was there was to make sure that Canyon was uncontested in securing that objective to provide more safety for the bot lane. But Yankos was already in a position to make that gank happen, which meant that Darmon could not react in time. And that's a heartbreaker for Nuclear and Barrel. As you can see, he wanted to dash out and win wall at the same time, couldn't get it right in the moment choked when it counted, and that's that's huge. That difference is going to be everything, because you can see they're behind Mickey in terms of gold value. The support is ahead Oof. of both of those champions. And while Gragas, yes, could be a huge influencer on team fights to come, we've already talked about it, you meme about it, but he also is going to be in a very rough spot for probably the rest of this game if he's not given free time on a side lane. And this is one of the big break points as well for this game because when we think about how the game is going to play out, a lot of it is about split pushing, you know, being able to generate pressure on a side lane and then being able to bring that pressure together. One of the big issues that Darwin is going to uh, experience is that they can't send Yasuo to a side lane because it's going to take him so much longer to get stronger, which means Caps is going to constantly have pressure in that one versus one. Yeah, and I think that having pressure in that one versus one is, is going to be so pivotal because you know, it allows him to move to the side lanes, as you're saying, to help out this York and also sets up very well for the 1-3-1 style of play that G2 could look towards in the later stages. There is catch on the side of Dom one, but it is not that long-range semi-global style, and they're going up. in. Wonder flashing out to safety, the kick flash backwards. Wonder's now going to be in trouble. Will summon the Maiden in the midst, but he'll go down right as he does so. The rest of the team now looking for the collapse. The Maiden's still hitting Canyon for a brief moment. He's been locked up and should be taken out. Caps will be donated the kill. 
Nagari will escape with his life. And Showmaker was back in base. They could not react to the play, and while Wonder does lose his life, they end up trading one for one. Caps is going to be able to push that one in on the top side of the map, and you can just see how many more advantages G2 are gaining in this early game. It feels like whatever Dom1 tried to do, G2 have an answer for. Feral. We'll stop the recall Ooh. there from Mickey X. Mickey will walk away. And it's crazy how this series, both bot lanes were like, these are the guys that can play anything. And both times they've opted for something that isn't the Kaiser or the Zaya, it has turned against them. And that's kind of that's kind of been honestly the story of the tournament, I feel like. But back to this top lane play, it is a good move to try to get your Jays ahead. When you're a Canyon, your options are very limited at this point. Corky's locked under his turret. Yep. Your bot lane is getting blasted. Yep. Where else can you go? So he has to try to make a play towards top side. But I think that is what allowed Caps and Yankos to make the read and to be there to respond. So now I'm expecting Darwin to look for a swap up towards the top side because they recognize they're losing the 2v2. So the next best play for Darwin is to actually look for a play towards the Rift Herald because you know that Mountain is spawning right now and you know that G2 is just going to keep sieging onto this bot. But Nuclear and Barrel are actually going to continue to play towards this two versus two. And the only reason why I could see that happening is because they want to keep Nogari in the 1v1 against Wonder, because they believe that that is their next best bet to be able to come back into this game. But it is 10 minutes in, and it is a 2k gold deficit, and things, while they will get easier as level six starts to come in for Barrel and Nuclear, a single misstep from Perks can be punished. The combo there is lethal. They definitely just have to hide under this tower and concede all pressure as G2 continue to exert their control over the map. So the problem with this decision from Damwon is that G2 can now be the team to swap. Notice that the full bot side has been cleared, the Drake is gone, the duo is now resetting, and they, as we can see on the minimap right now, are immediately making their way up towards the Herald. They're going to have a numbers advantage, Nuclear and Beryl do not have the teleport, and even though... Um, Nuclear and Beryl do get some farm on the bot side. With a Rift Herald, G2 can siege up onto this uh, onto this top lane tower with a Rift Herald as well. So, in my opinion, it was a big misplay from Darwin not to swap and trying to get the trade off for this Herald. Oh, and now it's Nagari who might just pay the price for that. Right, this is a little greedy from G2. They're fishing for that dive. They're not going to find anything, and that means that Dan One Gaming have gotten the time to reset and can look to match this Rift Herald. They won't get the setup, but you can see Corky TPing mid, ready to respond if necessary. Yeah, we do see the answering swap now coming in, a little bit delayed, admittedly, from Dom Juan, but they have got to make something happen up here pretty quickly because it's actually Wonder pushing on the bottom side with the Yorick. Yorick left alone for that turret can just take this turret by himself very, very quickly. So Dom Juan either need to send someone bot right now or force the Rift. The option that they are calling for is just forcing this Rift, and despite the fact they're bot lane so behind, they're going to depend on these big ultimates of the Yasuo, the Lee, and the Gragas to try to make something happen. And they are huge ultimates. Perks did just get the Akathian rain upgrade, but he will not find the opportunity to isolate a target quite yet. Has gone down. TP now coming in. Mickey looking to get the fight kicked off. Showmaker on the backside. Massive Q coming in for Perks. Caps in the midst of everything. The rise will get taken down. Maybe, just maybe, Dumbo Gaming can look to turn this fight. But the Maiden of the Mist has been called. Nuclear has to flash it to safety. Cannon will use him to escape. Barrel taken down. Cut down. Nuclear will grab one back in exchange. Down one Gaming will find the shutdown onto Perks. Kick comes out. Follow up is there. Knock up is there. But they will not fight to play. I mean, it kind of worked out for G2, but I've got to say it's a terrible call to make Completely that fight. Agree. Completely agree. You, you have a guaranteed free first turret on the bottom side. Rift Herald is the potential of two turret plates. He already had that and more. That should have been guaranteed first turret for G2. Back off and continue to set up on the top side of the map once someone goes down to answer wonder. So I honestly hate the call to fight there from G2. And that was kind of opting into the play that Dom Juan wanted and allowing them to kind of set the pace of the game. And because Nogari still had his teleport up, he can now TP to the bot side, get a bunch of plates back in his favor. Yeah. And I, I agree with you for so many reasons, Azel, because Tell me all about it. <laughs> the other big thing I love this. was that by G2 trying to force that fight, it was actually the best case scenario for Dalmon to find a fight yeah. and actually come back into the game. What if Nuclear gets kills? Uh, and while he didn't, they actually get that shut down onto Perks, which is so big. He lost all of his summoner spells and all of the momentum is now being swung back in the favor of Dalmon. Look at that gold gap. It's now only a thousand with this Rift Herald. They should be able to secure even more plates. Two plates will go down. Nuclear will be able to grab the gold force to use the wind wall. I get first now. turret now as well. He will. And that's ideal. The Yasuo put so far behind. They're I didn't up think in gold. Ever be able to make it back? But now you're right, up in gold. And Damwon, beautiful play to make it back on the back of a huge mistake from the side of G2. This is kind of the two sides of G2, right? Sometimes it, it is overconfidence. It's 
the idea that from their point of view, I'm sure they're just thinking, we can just win the fight. Who cares, right? We can just kill them all here. We can outplay them in this situation. But you have a Yorick working on a one turret plate remaining tower with minions there. Why look for this sort of engage? Caps goes in. He's collapsed on and knocked down by so many members. Wonder is not going to be as successful in this team fight anyway. The Yorick is not really set up to have that level of success. And then this exhaust shutting down perks Showmaker surviving with little amounts of HP, and yes, it is a trading kills, but you lost turret plates, you lost the Rift Herald, you lost the guaranteed first turret on the bottom side. Shut so, down as well. You know, G2 certainly are going to be really kicking themselves for that play. Now, of course, it's not all doom and gloom. No. G2 still very powerful. Um, they're going to look for a pick in the bot lane as well. Could escape from Nagari, but now he's locked up under the tower. They will follow up with the Rek'Sai ultimate. Can they get anything back? Canyon ready to go over the wall. He's going to look fish for the Sonic Wave. The flash out from Wonder. Yankos, though, now the next one in trouble. The knockup will come through. TP now responded with. G2 set up for a siege on the bottom side. With a preemptive uh, teleport there from Caps. He thought the Canyon was going to overcommit, and he wanted to be in a position to help offer support, but that's not going to be needed. Meanwhile, G2 also sieging in the mid lane, so they will reclaim the gold lead. A lot of effort being put now into securing that bot tower, and the Drake is spawning in about 10 seconds. We've got to look at what summoner spells are available. Flash is down for every single member on the side of Dom 1. Same can be said for G2, except for Mickey. A bunch of ultimates are available, except for Yankos's which means that I think Darwin's actually in a better position to fight right now. You have the Oswald, you have the Grag Assault, you have the package for Corky as well. Don Juan have the edge in the coming team fight. A single wind wall could change the fight, and we know how strong the package is. Nagari on the way down. They have control over the pitch. G2 will have to face check into Fog of War, and they're not going to risk it. That's going to be the Cloud Drake for Don Juan. Smart of G2 not to try and go for that fight. The difference in uh, ultimates that were available and also the fact that I think G2 had some gold that they wanted to spend and hadn't had an opportunity to yet uh, also was a good reason not to commit to that fight. I think G2 just wanted to try to group up and see could they fish for something there, could they find some sort of a pick that would allow them entrance into that dragon, but you know, if, if you don't think you can take it, you can also just make the call to say, all right, Wonder, you go top, we'll seed this dragon, you shove in the wave top lane and get down some turret damage, right? Because really all they accomplished by moving down there was, was kind of maybe buying a little bit of time, but they're losing farm on other sides of the map, and they could be kind of forcing Dom1 to reset, get out on the map, and then answer the waves that they have, which will allow G2 to make a play elsewhere. For now, Yorick and the Maiden will siege on the top side. It's a slow push in. They want to make sure they see enough members from Don Juan to know that they are not getting collapsed on, but it gives Don Juan perfect access to this bottom side jungle, and it will just, in the end, be a trade of Tier 1 for Tier 1 as Nagari breaks down that bot lane Tier 1 as he denies as much CS as possible. Yeah, you can see that Don Juan are also ahead of the play, and they have Canyon towards the bot side of the map as well. Looks like Perks and Mickey are actually setting up a bit of a trap in the mid lane. They're not going to be able to find anything off the back of that. So as you were saying, Dracos, I think... Oh, wait, Nogger is still pushing at the bot lane. He actually is getting a decent amount of damage onto that tower as well. But now he will be forced to back off. But have they overstayed here? Because this is a great opportunity for them to reset before Round G2. More, more. Cap's going to be delivered. Nagari now needs to run. He can't just look to knock him back. But they're going to try to burn Caps down before the fight even kicks off. Good all comes in from Mickey. Going to knock up two. Perks now into the midst of the entire fight. That's isolated damage. Perks now fishing. He oh, chasing. He He's it. not afraid. Level 10 to level 10. The Kais is oh, so oh, strong. Oh. And the double kill will double down on that advantage. And we were just talking about how damn one are they overstaying here because they got the bot tower first. They could have based come back out onto the map before G2 had an opportunity to, and then they could have been the ones to set up more vision, recontrol the waves, and overall in a better position. But instead, they, they greed for the bot tier two. And because they overstay, that allows G2 to find these quick picks. And now Pooks has picked himself up a double kill. And it has been both teams, honestly, at times, overstepping in this game, and their opponents quick to punish. And you have to credit you know, G2 for being able to punish here, just as you had to credit Dom1 for being able to punish G2 looking towards that Rift Herald play. And in the last game, Dom1 were so cautious. They didn't want to force anything too aggressively. So to see them misstep like that for G2 to punish has to be frustrating for any Dom1 fans, because now Perks was already wildly far ahead of the opposition, even more so, two and a half items on the Kai'Sa. He's so far ahead that he can't even fully stack the Muramon at this point, and the Yorick, one and a half items, getting closer and closer to matching that chase. You also gotta remember how young these Dom1 players are, and you know, this is really kind of their, their first entrance onto the international scene. They don't have a ton of experience under their belt, and you know, the pressure in these games is enormous. You're playing in front of a massive crowd that is so, so loud. We've heard the 
players talk about the roar of the crowd, the rumble of the stage when they are cheering and when they are booing. And I think sometimes you can get a little bit too hyped up in those moments. So talk to me, Azale, because I'm not a Yorick expert. All right. But in regards to the 1v1 side lane, Yorick should be stronger than Jace later into the game, yes? Yep. But if is the Mura mana or the mana I forget which one they call it, the Mura mana build, will that make a difference in terms of the 1v1? I, I don't think it should. I, I think it's honestly almost entirely down to execution. Yorick, whether you win or lose fights, is pretty much do you hit your E's? Right. Yes. If you don't hit your E's, no, you don't win, right. right? Because when you hit the E, you get the slow, your ghouls are dealing damage, and with that slow, you can guaranteed hit your cage. Once the Jace is caged in, his, his dash, his jump, is only used offensively. He cannot hop out of that cage, and you can beat him down and stat check people in those fights. I, I want to see Wonder go towards something like a Sterix, and when you have that Triforce Sterix build, uh, you are going to be more than durable enough to actually take any potential extended 1v1 against Nogari. In the morning mist, that E will not connect there, so Wonder will not commit any further to that trade. Would have sent the ghouls flying into the face of Nogari. For now, Mickey X and G2, G2, perks in the mid lane. Pushing it further. The package comes out. Maybe Don Juan can look to make a play around this, but it is 1 3 1, just about total control right now for G2. So the objective is mid lane right now, because if we draw our attention to the minimap, you can see that both top is being pushed in, bot also being pushed in, and the idea is that you have the collapse coming in from these side lanes to threaten a dive. We saw a very similar play in game one. It looks like for now, G2 just waiting to have their waves in the optimal setup and for Rek'Sai to come back out onto the map, and then they want again to threaten this mid lane play. And if if Dom one do not answer, then uh, G2 will either secure the mid lane tower or they'll get some chip damage down onto one of these side lane turrets. And Dom one gaming seeing the dragons respawning are trying to make a play of their own. They're taking mid control. They will use it to set up around the pit. But Caps has now TP'd some minions in on the top side with the realm warp just to start continuing to pressure here to force Dom one gaming into a situation where they have to be willing to give up something for this Drake. And I think this is just a really smart play. G2 are actually going to move. Perks and Mickey up there as well to knock down this turret, right? This is what I wanted them to do last time Dragon was spawned. If Dalmon will commit to the 5v5, you can spread the map. You can take more farm and gold than a team that is perma grouping ever will be able to, and you can extend these advantages. That's two towers for a Dragon. Showmaker has to be careful here, though. Still stepping forward with a ton of confidence. Mickey's in trouble. If he can't proc that aftershock, he may just get chunked out before the fight even starts. But G2 breaking down that tower. Oh, they're going, they're going. Perks going in, though. He sees it. Blood in the water. He knows the opportunity is there. And nuclear drops. And nuclear is shut down as he takes a greedy path to rotate up towards the top lane. And now they have an easy avenue in towards this mid-tier one. G2 making smart decisions on the map, very similar to what we saw in game one. Not over-forcing and overall coming out ahead in terms of map control. Look at that, that's three towers and a kill. Dom one got a dragon, that is nothing in comparison. The amount of map control they're gonna have. If you ever try to force a dragon on the bottom side, G2 can take a free and hit now up in that top lane. And these are the kind of plays you wanna see G2 going for when you have Ryze, when you have York, who can dominate both side lanes. And it's not just perks that can smell blood in the water. You hear Madrid chanting, let's go G2, the sixth man for this G2 lineup. And you said it once as I'll say it again, the pressure on Dom1. Here in, I mean, European soil to make the big play, to find a win here. And G2 just able to walk away with everything. In this play, Nuclear thinking he has the flank, but uh, sadly, too little too late. The knockup instantly goes down. It's, it's a greedy path to take. You know you don't have any control over that topside jungle, and he thinks that he's safe because he has Showmaker and Beryl there, but he's not. Good flash knockup from Yankos, sets up for Perks to find another kill. He's now at three fully completed items, 22 and a half minutes into the game. Perks deactivated, Umayan activated. <laughs> And that's the thing, Triple Evolve on the Kai'Sa 2, the AP build, he's going to hit so hard on every single member, whether they're building any tanky stats or not. And no one is, so he's going to hit literally everyone like a truck. As you see, Wonder and Nagari go back and forth. Oof. Nagari, though, very confident to step forward in the maiden, wants to take this one down so Wonder can't threaten the push. Yeah, he has been playing really well to actually dodge out on all those Zs. Uh, we can see Wonder reset because your, your Maiden actually will heal it back up to full if you do go back to base. And, and keeping that out is so important because you really can't contest the Jace when you don't have that cooldown. But you know one of the most important things about that previous play was also that G2 had vision on this topside jungle before they went for it. Nuclear had no wards in that area. He oh. crossed over Pinkor. They're actually looking for a Baron play, I think. Yep. They're just going to Realm Warp right in. Nuclear spots them out, though. They know that they're chucking this one down. Though. But Perks does so much damage to this objective. Canyon. 
They will not risk the 50-50. G2 are going to pull back here. Wonder is resetting. They don't want to risk anything else here, but lucky that Nuclear spots that Realm Warp out, or they could have just lost it in an instant. I think it's it's a great attempt, right? You know, there's there's no reason not to go for something like that. Realm Warp is not an incredibly long cooldown. You take a risk like that, it's incredibly low risk and incredibly high reward. Now on gaming, though, taking a risk to step forward here. They don't have the package. Lee Sin is there. It could be a clutch drag assault to get things kicked off. The hook will not connect either. Made it there and full health as Wonder has retreated. Caps now coming in from the side, but no Realm Warp for him. So, Dom want a group dance five because they know as a five-man unit that's the best situation for them to win a team fight. While Nuclear does not have his second completed item just yet, Showmaker is still very strong with both the Infinity Edge and Tree Force. But G2 is saying, we have a 5k gold lead, we want to fight you as well. Hook lands on Barrel, eyes on the cask, it could be the turning point, but they are just going to back off. Dawn do not want to take the risk. Barrel caught in the wall there, and that should be his death. G2 will not overextend. The wind wall is now down as well, but G2 are just willing to back off. The Maiden has dropped in response. Now, G2 want to convert this fight into a Baron, but unless they chunk out Canyon, there's no way they can force it. Notice that Caps is going to try and steal away the red buff, then move up towards top to push that wave out. This is all about using this small skirmish. Oh, Grace Seeker. Go Grace Seeker. Oh, wow. He's actually managed to steal that one. I didn't notice that one. But G2 is going to use this opportunity to reset because Darmwon is now going to be forced to catch these waves. And so G2 can go back, spend their gold, get back out onto the map first. And that means that they're in a better position to then contest for the Baron next. And while it was just a support flash that they forced out, I actually think that Gragas has such an important job in this composition, right? And without the Body Slam flash available, their potential to start fights is so much lower. You are then very dependent upon, you know, a beautiful cast or Canyon finding some sort of kick flash, but that's a lot harder to pull off than something like that Body Slam flash onto perks or caps, which could give you a way in. And G2 are also just 5k ahead. And so while the Yasuo has the IE and the Static Shift completed, he is incredibly squishy. Alting in could mean instant death yeah. if he doesn't have a wind wall in an ideal position. So the theoretical output for nuclear, yes, insanely high. The realistic output, still nigh impossible for him to pull off. And we also see perks now with that QSS. So you know, if you do get hit by those knockups, there is the ability to QSS flash, QSS, I believe, even alt. I think it's you actually 14. can. 14. He's like, the same level as Nogger. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Nuclear is level 12 because he's been forced to group this whole time. Once you're that far down, you can no longer side lane yeah, I mean, as the Yasuo, it, right? yeah. We talked about how in the early game, the problem that Darmon is going to find is because of how far behind this Yasuo fell, um, he could never match either Caps or Wonder. So he was forced to sit in the mid lane. He had to stay with Showmaker because he needed Showmaker there for the wave clear. And so now Jiju's in this position where they have a 5.5k gold lead. Three items are completed across the board, and I think G2 can look to try and force fights if they want, but the safer play is to probably try and play sides. So Darmon looking to take a gamble. That's the team now coming in. Take a look at this build here from Caps. It looks like he's actually going Frozen Heart and Righteous Glory. Wow. Uh, that is going to be my guess for this. And, and this gives you such a good build to actually get in the mix of things, to be able to be very tanky. Engage the armor. Tries. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you want to get in the middle of the fight with the tabbies. You have health and armor as well from this Righteous Glory. And he can just get into the center of the fight and not be as at risk of getting burst down. And that's the Righteous Glory. is going to force the flash out from Nagari. The pressure just continuing to mount for the side of Dom Juan Gaming. And look at the Baron. Instantly going to be started. Perks is just going to strike through this one. Mickey going to do what he can. Has to be careful, though. Can't stay for too long. Perks just goes right in. That's so much Kaisa damage. And now Dalwan Gaming has retreat. Barrel need to find a way out. Caps in the midst of everything. Nuclear, the knockoff will connect. It will connect, and Caps will go down. Wonder now has to be careful because Yankos is caught in the midst of the team. Dalwan Gaming, for now, are in control of the fight. But Wonder is off to the side. Yankos is running for his life. Perks has shut down Showmaker, and that will be massive. But G2, they need to back off. They cannot overcommit to this play. They will now retreat. Canyon now running for the hills. Lee Sin versus Rek'Sai, the 1v1 we all wanted. Will not happen. Perks, oh no. The Prey the oh, just smiles. smite him down. And that's going to be another team fight win for G2. It looked close when flank when Caps was obliterated on the flank. I thought that that was the opportunity that Tamwon needed to turn this game around. But three members are dead. Only Nuclear and Barrel are left to try and say, no smite on Yankos. Doesn't matter. And when you have that ultra-fed Kai'Sa, you can still win out in a fight like that because all the attention was drawn by Caps, and it's not the play you normally want to go for without a Zonia's, but they still were able to come out on top, and it's a good initial turn here. Perks hits the W, alts out to try to focus down the jungler. If you can kill Kanye, you know you can turn back to the Baron. Then in comes Caps here with the flank, 
but gets burst down immediately. The fight, though, becomes largely about Perks here and Showmaker. This battle on the side, Perks Ooh. uses Vision to hide around the bottom side of that brush, then goes into the E with the self. So Showmaker does not see him approaching. He gets on top of him, isolated Q, down you go. And we can see that G2 don't overcommit Wonder without any ghouls. Doesn't have the same damage and doesn't have the same chase potential. And as we also see that Yanko's just running Canyon down. He is forced to use his smite to find this execution. Objective secured. Uh, Perfect objective smite. Objective secured, as you rightly said. Doesn't miss that one. Not a 50-50. And now G2, <laughs> they can start playing on the side lanes. They know that they're going to be stronger in the one versus one. They know that they have the Baron buff. And they're going to be looking to break into the base of Darmwan. And as we see from this damage grab, this is kind of the power of having two really massive damage threats is that even when Caps immediately gets deleted, if Perks is allowed free reign into the enemy backline, he can still deal more than enough damage to solo win a fight. And with the Mercurial now coming through as well, it's going to be that much harder to knock him out of the coming exchanges. And the Siege just slow and steady from G2 in the mid lane with this cannon. Yankos quietly has gotten very, very strong in this game here too. And you can see with that third item GA, you become such a threat to actually try to trade out your life in the back line. And if you can kill off a carry and die for it with that GA, that can be a game-winning play on a Rek'Sai in the later stages. The Ning special, yeah. as we like to call it. <laughs> I mean, it's great. <laughs> if you can die for, for a Yasuo kill or a Corky kill this stage of the game. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nagari. Off to the side, but now Perks is coming in. Not quite the 1v1 he wanted. Nagari gets picked off by the Ghoul and Wonder. Now retreats. Now we'll be able to make it out to safety. The Realm Warp is coming in. The kick, they're trying to finish the job. But that's it. Double kill for G2. A quick exchange in their favor. And G2 will kill three members of Dom1. They have the Baron buff, the Nexus is in their eyes, and they're looking to take Dom1 to match point. The final push in, Showmaker gonna do what he can. Meanwhile, Yanko's just buying time, fighting nuclear, making sure that he cannot back, making sure that this push is guaranteed, that the end is guaranteed. G2, eyes set on a series win. This will take them to match point as Showmaker is forced to retreat. Still so strong, Caps healthy, Perks healthy, and that's all that's going to matter. They will be able to break this one down. Wonder has dropped in the meantime. Showmaker desperate to get something back. He goes golden, he tries to buy time. Barrel on the win, but it's not enough. G2 take us to match point. And the trend that we're seeing is that in every game, G2 is the one making all of the early game proactivity happen. The question as to whether or not Dom1 can turn it around is how well do they handle the pressure? How well can they stop G2 from finding these early game plays? And we thought that when Damwon punished G2 around that Rift Howl, that that could have been the moment. But G2 did not relent. They did not slow down. They continued looking for picks on a side lane. They continued to control the map. And it